live from WTVO Rockford and your home team. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Terrorist attacks in Israel over the weekend have many worried. Now local temples are on high alert for potential crime. It took half a year, but traffic is flowing again down a busy Rockford Street. We'll explain how it may change your drive around town. And a promising new treatment for ALS. One local woman with a long family history of the disease is hopeful for the future. Good evening, I'm Amy Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Before we get to those stories, Rockford police officers are investigating after a young man is shot near a local park. RPD's X account posted about the shooting around 4.50. The incident happened on Ranger Street in Orton Keys near Saybrook Park. They say the young man has at least two gunshot wounds, but his injuries are considered non-life threatening at this time. Police ask for people to avoid that area while they investigate. Over the weekend, terrorists in Israel coordinated a deadly surprise attack. Hundreds of people were killed, including several Americans. Here in the state line, families are being affected by the war. Jess Lipson was able to speak with some who have loved ones near that violence. Jess, have they been able to stay in contact? Erica Mimi, I spoke with the president of Temple Beth L here in Rockford. She has been able to speak with her mom and brother who are near the violence. Ronit Golan and her husband had plans to visit in the near future, and that chance to visit loved ones is put on hold with the breakout of war. Ronit's mom, who, lives, who is 92, lives alone and was awoken to sounds of explosions. They're going after civilian populations in populated areas, and it's very scary. I called her right away and I checked in with my brother and um, and I've been called, I continue to call every day and I've told them to please let me know if there's anything I need to know. At 6, I'll be live at Temple Bethel where just like many other synagogues across the country, there's been a high alert with added security. Mimi, Eric? Jess, thanks. A two car crash leads to a house almost being hit. Rockford Area Fire and Emergency Crews are on the scene of the accident on North Springfield Avenue near Auburn High School. At least two cars are involved in that crash. As you can see, one vehicle is on the road. The other is on the lawn of a nearby home. No other information has been released yet. We'll keep you up to date as this story develops. Janesville police arrest two men after several shootings over a week ago. On October 1st, officers were called to the parking lot of Woodman's on North Lexington Drive for reports of a shooting. During a following investigation, authorities learned it was a retaliatory shooting for an incident that happened earlier that day on South Jackson Street. We told you last week that Tyrone Gibson had been arrested on charges of attempted homicide. We now know that was in connection to the Jackson Street shooting. Lawrence White was identified as the Woodman's shooting suspect. He was arrested Friday and is charged with attempted homicide and recklessly endangering safety. David Baldwin was arrested along with White. He's charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm. A Rockford teen is arrested, accused of making threats on social media. On Saturday, police were made aware of threatening messages on Snapchat directed at Guilford High School. Those threats included what looked like a firearm. An investigation led to a 13-year-old suspect. He's not a student at Guilford. Police recovered a BB gun that appears to be the one shown in the messages. The teen is charged with disorderly conduct. After months of work, a busy Rockford Road's reconstruction is finished. Charles Street between Parkside Drive and 28th Street is open. Since April, crews have been rebuilding Charles. The $6 million project includes roadway work, signal upgrades, and a multi-use path for bicyclists and for people to walk or run. Problems relocating utilities pushed back the original reopening date. For city drivers, we'll see some relief at the pump. Gas prices are averaging around $3.60 a gallon. That's nearly 27 cents lower than a month ago and more than 71 cents lower than last year at this time. Experts at Gas Buddy say the national average could fall by another 25 to 45 cents by late November if this trend continues. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a form of muscular dystrophy. It's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. ALS affects control. The muscles needed to move, speak, eat, and breathe, and there is no cure. But one local woman is the first to receive a promising new treatment. Andrea Baroni spoke with her. Andrea, her family has a long history with the disease. 
Yeah, Eric and Mimi, Michelle Francis and her family have been affected by ALS SOD1. This hereditary form of the disease has taken the life of someone in Francis's family going back seven generations. But with this new treatment plan, she tells me she is optimistic for herself and the generations to come. It gives me hope um, because I know there was nothing like it. It's targeting tourists, so it's in the right direction. Francis joined the clinical trial of a new drug, Troferson, in late 2022, just before the FDA's approval in April of 2023, making it the only current treatment that targets SOD1. She's been on the treatment plan for about five months now at UW Health in Madison and has seen improvements already. They found out that my um, NFLs, the neurofilament um, lights, have reduced like 50%. And basically those are the tox, it kind of measures the toxicity of um, the neurons degenerating in my body. So 50% of that has gone down. By it going down, that's definitely good. It's less of that in my body. She also has seen advancements in her physical mobility. I have been able to transfer myself a little better sliding from the wheelchair to the toilet to the bed to this and that. Francis shared that she's confident in the treatment and believes it will lead to more breakthroughs and medication in the future. At least I could say, yeah, it's still a terminal disease, but try this drug. This might be able to help you and the sooner you try it, the better. So that gives me hope. It gives me hope that now other people are trying drugs for that and for other things with this kind of technology. Something that's going to be more years from now that's going to even be better than that. Francis encourages those battling with ALS to be open to experimental treatments and to not lose hope. Mimi? All right, thanks, Drea. Powerball keeps adding more money to an already gigantic payout. The lottery drawing is still looking for a winner after 34 consecutive tries. The jackpot is estimated to be worth a whopping $1.55 billion. The last person to win a Powerball jackpot was July 19th when the prize was $1.8 billion. We spoke with some Rockford residents and asked them what they do if they won the jackpot. Well, I would uh, definitely invest and some uh, newer, newer technology beyond hydrocarbons. I would uh, probably get another home and um, maybe look at some, some more schooling for my grandkids. Uh, I would pay off my parents' house and probably buy my husband a new truck. <laughs> well, you know, that's a lot of money. We help out whoever we can help out and uh, pay off my house. <laughs> The next lucky winner can choose the cash, cash payout option, which would allow them to bring home about $679 million. We'll have those winning numbers after Monday Night Football. We could soon have a new speaker in the U.S. House of Representatives. Coming up, while Republicans promise a leader in place by next week, the former speaker isn't ruling out a return to the gavel. We get some sunshine out there this afternoon. Temperatures, though, still a good 10 degrees or so below where we should be. But we are going to keep that cooler trend around and add in some rain and wind later this week. Find out when to expect those rain showers coming up in the forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News. You're a home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Lever, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. A new Speaker of the U.S. House could be selected in the next 48 hours, but that's if Republicans can unite behind a candidate. Washington correspondent Alexander Limon reports Kevin McCarthy is no longer ruling out the possibility of returning to the role. House Republicans say the next election for Speaker of the House will be different. It's better to play out in private where the cameras aren't on and, and we don't have people uh, trying to get attention. In January, it took 15 rounds to elect Kevin McCarthy and Colorado Republican Ken Buck doesn't want a repeat. For those folks that, that think we are projecting a, a chaotic image, uh, it makes mo a lot more sense to do this behind closed doors. And after war broke out between Israel and Hamas, Kevin McCarthy says the House needs a speaker as soon as possible. And he left the door open to the possibility of returning to the role. Whether I'm speaker or not, I'm a member of this body. I know what history has had. 
and I can lead in any position it is. Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who orchestrated the ouster of McCarthy, rejects the idea that expelling the Speaker of the House jeopardizes global security. Well, I don't think that other countries think about Kevin McCarthy's speakership quite as much as Kevin McCarthy does. Gates says the internal battle to elect a new speaker should be a quick process. We'll have a new speaker next week and we'll be prepared to do our work. Congressman Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise are the current frontrunners for the next speaker, and one could emerge as the party's choice by the end of the day, Tuesday. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. Well, we have a kind of a chilly week ahead of us. Coming up, Candace gives us a rundown of our cold temperatures along with the chances for rain. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, it has been a little windy out there this afternoon with that northwest wind sustained 10 to 20 miles per hour. We've had some gusts today close to 25, so that has put a little bit of a chill in the air out there this afternoon. And temperatures as a result, despite the sunshine, have struggled to make it much above that 60 degree mark. We made it up to 58 about an hour or so ago. We're now at 57 in Rockford, 54 in Poplar Grove, 56 in Freeport, and 54 temperature in Monroe. Our weather watcher Terry in Genoa, 56 degrees. Look at that dew point number down to 30. So we've been able to mix in some dry air. So you may have noticed actually it feeling a little more dry out there this afternoon. And that kind of dry air is something that'll stick around tonight and tomorrow too. So that should help keep us mostly clear as we go throughout not only the night tonight, but also into the afternoon. The exception will be overnight when we start to see some cloud cover work back in. Now we've got plenty of sunshine out there. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera out in Freeport late this afternoon. Still a little breezy and as the sun does set, our temperatures will drop back. We get down into the 30s. This morning, because of cloud cover, we stayed in the 40s. I think we've got a better chance of getting into the 30s for the overnight and because of that, another frost advisory has been issued for all of southern Wisconsin and most of northern Illinois for a better opportunity for some patchy frost here overnight. So bring in or cover up anything that may be sensitive there to those colder temperatures. 59 for tomorrow afternoon. We are still below average, and that is the trend over the next several days. And we're going to add in some rain and wind along with that. But our skies for tomorrow are anticipated to stay dry. Now, I mentioned the clearing skies for the time being. There are some clouds up to the north in Wisconsin, and these are working down to the south here. And I do think these will work in uh, after midnight in southern Wisconsin and could could come close to us by sunrise tomorrow. So if those clouds come in a little faster, temperatures will have a bit of a hard time trying to make it down into the 30s. And for some, we may still be in the 40s, just as Futurecast is indicating here. So we see that cloud cover come in. That could limit how far our temperatures drop. You've got maybe a better potential there to the south of seeing those lower numbers, high, a higher potential of seeing temperatures maybe just a smidge in the mid and upper 30s, close to 40 degrees there by sunrise. So a little cloud cover tomorrow morning morning, but I think we clear things out. Temperatures may get close to that 60 degree mark once we get into tomorrow afternoon and we'll stay mostly dry through Wednesday, but Wednesday is when we start to see some changes begin to take place beginning Wednesday night and into Thursday. All has to do with where that warm front sets up. That warm front tied into a strong fall storm system that'll be moving in here towards the middle to end of the week. North of that, you've got a brisk north wind and cooler temperatures. South of that, those numbers will be warm, but with with this, we also are going to be watching the potential for some heavy rainfall, which could be with us Wednesday night into Thursday and then really into Friday too. Temperatures staying in the upper 60s, although guys, if we see that front lifted further north, those numbers could go up just a bit. That would also increase our chance for thunderstorms, especially on Friday. But notice how we stay in the 50s even as we go into next week. Yeah, pretty much steady as she goes mm -hmm. for at least the first part of that seven day. Thanks, Candace. Scott's in next with sports. The Packers will be missing another key player tonight when they take the field in Los Angeles. And the Bears are scraping the bottom of the barrel for some help at running back. You'll see who they brought in. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. The Packers have enjoyed a long break since their last game 10 days ago. Tonight they're back at it in a Monday night game here on WTVO. They're in Vegas to take on the Raiders. Raiders have won only one of their first four games, and that was a one-point squeaker over the pitiful Denver Broncos. The one thing Jordan Love and the Packers will be looking for tonight is a fast start. In their last two games, the Packers have been outscored 44-3 in the first half. You know, I think Matt challenged us you know, after last game. 
um, you know, going through the break, just, you know, continue to watch uh, the past couple games and challenge everybody to think of one thing that, you know, we're going to work on going forward and just put kind of our focus into that going forward. So, uh, you know, we'll have just things we're thinking about going into the game, just focusing on things we can get better at. And the Packers will go this one without Aaron Jones. He's been ruled out with his hamstring injury. It'll be the third game he's missed this season. I'm taking the Packers in this one 24-17. It'll be a challenge for the Pack with some of their injuries, but nothing's going to come easy for this team all season. And I know Devontae Adams will be up for this game, but the Raiders are bad. And the Bears have almost run out of running backs. Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson, and Travis Homer are all injured. So today the Bears signed running back Darrington Evans off the Dolphins practice squad. Evans was on the Bears practice squad most of last season, and he did see a little action in the Bears' final six games. Honestly, it felt good. It felt good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy to be back, get around the guys I know, um, back in the building, the city, place I love. Um, I'm just ready to get to work, go all in, playbook, learn as much as I can learn. I'm here to help, here to play, um, and just know my role, do my role. If the Bears need more running back help, Rockford native James Robinson is still available. He was back in Rockford Friday night. He attended the Lutheran Crusaders football game against North Boone. Robinson even appeared to give some of the Crusaders a few pointers. Well, the Blackhawks opening night roster is set and includes some guys who were with the Ice Hogs as recently as last season. They include forwards Cole Gutman, Reese Johnson and Lucas Reichel, defenseman Alex Vlasic and goaltender Arvid Soderblom. Blackhawks open up tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. At Sports, we'll be right back. Definitely feeling more fall-like out there. You know, I was saying yesterday to Taylor when we were here, it just, it was some 60s and 70s, you know, between the 80 and the 50s would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Some middle just ground nice. would be right. just mm -hmm. nice and keep yeah. that around for a while yeah. and let us get used to it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we were kind of spoiled with some of the warmth last week and even early uh, last week. And now those temperatures have kind of fallen back. And that below average trend something that is going to unfortunately stick around. Although I think at some point here towards the middle of the month, we'll begin to even out. Um, we see in the 50s, Wednesday's our warmest day. We've got a frost potential tonight. And then rain moves in by Wednesday, Thursday. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.